Ladies and gentlemen, you guys are about to learn from the best right here, D this Barber. Is, this is the one of the best. Never say you the best. I hear you. Okay, one of, but thanks for the credit, Jay. And he's humble. Nice. Okay. All glory to God. He got a scar here, but that doesn't seem relevant. But this is the before. Okay, now let's bring it to life. These cutting going against the grain using the Andes XLs, five speed. Stretching out the skin. Okay, so we're gonna knock it all down to one level. Go ahead and use this magic pencil. We're gonna go ahead and scrap by the outside of his hair real quick. So now this is called positive art because I'm drawing it on there to create the picture. And in most of the competitions that you've won before, you don't have time to sketch it out, right? They don't let you sketch it out. Well, the thing is, this saves you time if they let you sketch it out. Right. So, uh, it's actually easier also, right? Yeah, it's easier because uh, right. you can draw it on there. So if you draw one eye too high and one eye too low, when you cut it out, then you can just cut you a little can fix low, it. a little high. Either that or you can just wipe it off and draw it on there again. You save time drawing it on there versus just cutting it right. out. And it'll be better for the barbers that are trying to learn how to do portraits, right? Yeah, that's why I'm showing y'all this technique awesome. right here. Okay, just leave room for error. Awesome. I'm sketching out a little bit at a time. I'm gonna get the headband now. Headband look like it goes to about right here straight up. All right, and it goes across like this. This headband goes on top of the ear about right here. Correct. We're going straight like that. Like I said, it really doesn't matter right now because we're going to be cutting this off anyway. This is just to give you a little sketch going on. Okay, he has a scar here, so we're going to go ahead and mark that. Got a couple creases right here, a couple creases right there. Pretty much all this is. All this gets cut off anyway, so. See, I usually use these two teeth or these two teeth. And D, why don't you use the edges for that? Well, because I don't want to make You don't want to go all the way. I don't want to go bald. Now, you can use edges if they're smaller, more comfortable for you. I mean, use whatever is comfortable for you. Keep in mind, when you're doing the shading, that the area that is dark in the picture that's where you're gonna leave most hair. And then the light area, that's where you're gonna cut the most. How old were you when you started cutting, D? Well, actually, I'm the third generation barber in my family. Oh, wow. My grandfather uh, was a barber. He cut my hair my whole life. And rest in peace until he passed away. And I grew my hair real long. And my mother got tired of my long hair. So she gave me a coupon and I rode my bike to the nearest barbershop. And they messed up my hair. So, uh... How old were you back then? I was in seventh grade, 12 years old. So I went home, grabbed my grandfather's clippers and cut my own hair and been cutting my own hair since. Nice. What made you want to get into it? Somebody asked you for one? Right. I got into designs first, you know. It was a friend of mine who looked like Michael Jordan. He used to want me to shave his head bald. So I told him, before I shave your head ball, let me try to write my name in cursive. And after a while, the cursive turned into just some graffiti tribal. And then after a while, just, he didn't want it a ball head no more. He just rather keep the design. V, how do you pick how much hair to leave? Well, just look at the picture. The white spots is where it's bald. And the darker it gets, the more hair it is. Like on the cheekbone, you can put a ball spot there. And, oh, you can put a ball spot there and fade out in a circle. Okay. Well, more like a triangle, upside down triangle. You see how it's like that? Right. So, that's right there on the eye. Now that we're talking about that, let's go ahead and take care of that now. All right. Yeah. Want to show them what you're talking about? Right here. See how that came out? Yeah. This side don't want to be the lip. Now, we want to go ahead and trace out his jaw now. What we could do is cut this ball right underneath here. So right here, bottom of his jaw, about right here, goes up, and right here. Okay. 
Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut out his lips. He has a lip right here. See, look, if I had a pencil, I wouldn't even be hesitating right now. I would just cut it off. But I'm getting back to my zone where I just cutting out little pieces with the edges and then I shade them out at the end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just wanted to show y'all the color technique. See where this nose bone is right here. Mm -hmm. The eyelash, this is the space right here above it. Right here above it. Diesel, any other tips? Or? Yes. Start off with, uh, like, you could Google any word or whatever the customer or client wants to. Then uh, go to images and look for line drawings. L-I-N-E, drawings. So you could just type in the character that you want and line drawings behind it and click on images. And I would start off with those first. Right. More like cartoon characters. Right. Do you suggest they draw it first if they're new to this? I mean, yeah, you want to leave room for error. It would probably help, right? If they draw it first before they do it on the head? Before they do it on somebody's head? Most likely. What I'm doing now, I'm just shading it. Just shading LeBron out. Forehead right here look like it needs a little shading. Right? Nice. Looks like it goes like this. Comes back around. So we're fading this ball line out to here. Right here. You see how the ball is going lighter? Okay, then we're gonna go right underneath here under the cheekbone. We're gonna fade this out too. That's it. And this is your first time doing this portrait, right D? Yeah, I've never drawn LeBron before. Done. I've seen the big pun that you did. You done Jesus, you done Michael Jackson. I've done a lot of people's wife or kid. Or oh, yeah. father and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, bring a picture. One time I had this lady getting married, so I drew a husband on her hair. Uh, oh, wow. A lady got her husband done on her head? Yep, and they put oh, it wow. on the invitations for the wedding. Oh, wow. That was nice there. I've seen pictures of babies that you've drawn on yep, their people, father's heads. Yeah, people bring me pictures of their kids. Draw that. Uh, most of the time... Uh, I had this guy wanting me to draw his own face in his head, so what I did, I kind of faced him in the mirror like this and looked at his face, and then I put it in the back of his head with both hands. That's there awesome. goes LeBron coming to life right there. Let's see. What... I'm gonna go ahead and fade out his ears right here. So how long have you been cutting, D? Twenty something years uh, now. Uh, twenty-four years now. And let me ask you, out of the trophies that you have won. Which is the one that, is there one that means the most to you? Like, one that that you like the most? The best for my career were the, the hair shows that I didn't win. I got the most recognition because I wasn't, I was a good sportsmanship about it, right? I still, you know, after they called the winners, even though if the crowd said, oh, boo, because, oh, yeah, whatever it was, I was still happy on the outcome. And then, like, the next day, they called me with, like, AD, congratulations. And I was confused because I lost. Well, I won on networking. I got to meet some good people, but I didn't come home with no money or no trophy or things like that, which my kids be waiting for that at home every time I leave. So uh, so they were like, congratulations. And I was looked at the phone. I'm like, uh, you know who you called? They was like, yeah, you in the, you're in the second page in the newspaper. So when I opened up, I went and bought the Tampa Bay Times. I opened it up and I was, as soon as you open up the first page, I'm, I was on the back of the first page. Half oh, yeah, page. I know you've been on newspapers, magazines. Yeah, but and most of those magazines were like hair so that I didn't win, that the people in, in the audience or whatever came up to me or judge and offered to give me a page or two in the magazine. And then uh, That's awesome. So yeah, so most of my reward were like wasn't had to do with no trophy or no cash prize or nothing like that. Oh, look at it that. It had to do with the recognition and the respect from the barber world. So the barber surprised me with this car. This car is from back in the days. When was this, D? Like back in 07, 08? Uh, I know, I think it was like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, about 07. Around there, huh? So this was the barber's business car. This was actually the first one that I that I opened up back in 02. That's awesome, man. I'm this is the original, the original Fade Masters. This is where it started from. Never forget oh, 
where you come from. Definitely. And that business card makes me want to tell you guys that to always keep your, you never want to burn your bridges, you know? You always want to treat everybody good. As a barber, you always want to be good with people. If um, you're moving on to another shop for any reason. Give them a two or be, three week yeah, notice. Give them minimum, because you want to be yeah, busy. Yeah, you like, want to be cool with everybody. Especially if you're going from barbershop to barbershop. And especially if you want to open up a barbershop. You always want to, you never want to burn your bridges. No, no, you know you what not. I mean? You always want to be cool. Exactly. Because once you and get I, a bad name, that's it. Yeah, and I feel like so many barbers out there, sometimes when they leave a shop, they feel like they got to leave in bad terms. They feel like, oh, you know, like, there's got to be some some kind of bad feelings there. And it's not even like that. It doesn't have to be that way, you know? And I feel the same way from barber owners, too. They got to treat their barbers good. And you, you've always been fair, though. You've always been fair. You've always been fair. Barbers out there, keep, it, keep this in mind. Let this be, like, a lesson to you guys. You know, you want to always leave the barbershop in good terms. And barbershop owners, you want to treat your barbers nice and with respect. Even when you, even when they're gonna leave and they're gonna move on, don't catch feelings over that. Don't get mad at them. Understand that everybody's trying to, you know, improve themselves, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's all part of the industry. A broad company to life. Oh yeah. So now you're doing the shading, right? Yeah, around the jaw. See, it's faded down and faded up. Like I said, it's a ball spot right here. And All then right. you fade it out. Now we'll go ahead and work on the eye. Since I like shading and fading, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out the little color that's around here. I, I don't think LeBron disappeared, do I? I think he's no, still there, right? still there. All right, then that's what shading so, and fading. See, this is why I prefer shading and fading because most of the time when you use color, I mean, which coloring is good, right? <clears throat> but once you take a shower, the coloring comes off. How many portraits has D. Barber done? I'm not sure. At least 20 of them. Now, how many cartoon characters I've done? Like, at least 100 of them. How many logos have I done? Hundreds of them. Notice how D Barber is using the T outliners for the areas that are lighter on LeBron's face. The shade and fading is where's that. Look, that's no color, no dye right there. That's all shade and fading. Let me go ahead and wet it down again. Just so we can show y'all. The There's no color There's in no there. No color, look. No color. But this is the most important part, right? The shade and fading, yeah, this is what brings us to life. This is what brings us to life. I always like checking my work in the mirror, look. See, I learned by cutting my own hair in the mirror, and the mirror does not lie. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and fade this beard away a little bit right here. Where do you focus first? Do you first focus in the, I focus in the on, eyes or do you well, focus first in the outside, the head? Well, like I said, whatever you feel more comfortable with you. Sometimes I will go ahead and do the outside, right? For you can know it could be proportioned. Mm -hmm. And then after that, if wherever is two of something, do the two of that first. For you can kind of level those out. You mean like two eyes or two yeah. ears? The client has a scar there, yes. so what are you going to do with that scar? Is that, is that well, in the I'm going to use the scar as a guideline, which I teach my students at the school. A haircut is not but a guideline. So this right here, I'm going to use that as a guideline to the back of his headband. So that's going to be my guideline. Then we're going to go underneath it a little bit more. I'm going to put this other line right here. And got more wrinkles right here. Usually, when they want a freestyle design, it's easy to use the scar because I yeah, make I it up as I go. Right. But when it comes to a, uh, a portrait, that scar, you have to use it in the, in the cut, of course. Either that or just eliminate it completely. Right. 
So we'll see what it looks like with the scar there or not. We'll just eliminate this back half. All right. Where his neck is at. Right. But if we could use it, then we will. Or not we'll right. just eliminate but it. But that's something that you have to pay attention to, <clears throat> right? Yes, if the scar to. is like in the middle of the you portrait. You have to analyze the head. And when it comes to the, the part of the consultation is analyzing the head, making sure it don't have no like ringworms or like no lice or like, you know, certain kind of disorders. So you have to analyze the hair anyway, especially when you have to do a portrait. You got to see because if they got light spots or ball spots, I got bitten some hair so that they gave me a model, which I use a two on him right here. But when I use a two on the person in the model, it looked like he was bald. So it can yeah, show no part. detail in it. Uh, so a model does have a lot to do right, with it. Right, right. The kind of cowlick affect you when you're doing a portrait or a design? Yes, it can. Like I said, that's why I told you just go ahead and proportion it out first for the cowlick to be out of your way. Because oh. uh, awesome. there's been times that I didn't worry about the cowlick. Like I said, I always speak from experience. And the experience I've had notice is uh without identifying where the calic is i drew a face and it landed between two eyes oh. so it looked like the guy had three eyes Ooh. so yeah did that mess you up in the competition i didn't win i didn't win <laughs> <laughs> but we're not just talking about the times that you won and the trophies yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that yeah. we're also talking about the you know the sad times yeah well they're not yeah, really they sad but you experience. know one thing about it they say uh it was quoted by professors don't tell nobody when you go into competition because when you get back and you don't win then you got a lot of people to tell you lost <laughs> all right? right so you got to stay humble at all times really that's nice i'm fading away the top of the lip we're fading top down you got a little smile on so you got to make the lip a little longer to give them that little grin effect. And once again, we're gonna spray them off as we go. Show y'all there's no color in here. Nice. Okay, that's just all shading right now. Awesome. Now we're gonna check it in the mirror as we go. Now, the, now as we fade it, we're gonna have to also make the, the light spots that we made bald. Once we fade them away, then we gotta come through and make them wider again for it can stand out even more. Okay, so we're just proportioning it right now. And you're using the corner of the blade to do all those details, right? Yes, sir. These, these two teeth for these two teeth. Yeah, if you ever get caught in a portrait where you get stuck, just carve out his face and, uh, and go ahead and put a proportion where you need to be at again. Same thing on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and go up right about right here. Bandana from right here to about right here. Straight across. I'm gonna go straight across to about right here. Say the bandana starts about. Right here. Close up. Now you want to leave room for error. So even if the bandana goes right here, you want to cut it out here because then you can cut more off. Just to right. get the head smaller or where you need it. Which it does. I have to be cut off about right here. What were you checking for just now? When you looked at the mirror? Well, I, I, like I said, I learned how to cut hair by using the mirror, so I always check the mirror. So you look at the haircut from a different perspective? Yes. Yep. I was going to ask you, what were you going to do about that part right there? This part? Yeah. Let me see. You will see it as it comes through. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now we're gonna do the teeth. Alcohol it down. You wanna keep your area clean at all times. We're gonna use 
a little bit of dye just for the for it to last a little longer. And I think the shading around it just brings out the portrait a little bit more. Do you agree? Oh yeah, definitely. You see it a little difference? I can tell, yeah. Now we're gonna add the detail before we cut out this eye, okay? Got it? Nice. We're gonna alcohol it down for the dye you use to stick and stain better. What are you doing right now, D? I'm cutting out the bandana. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this towel. I'm gonna sit it right here. Go ahead and get this dye. We're gonna start this off with So you did the bandana with the NBA guy on it, huh? Yeah, it's a little NBA guy right there. Nice. See the little ball the guy. It's in, it is in this slant, so you really can't see it, you see? Yeah. No, but it's really, it's really nice right there. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring out the darkness in certain spots now. I think I'm gonna bring the darkness out underneath his lip. Okay. I'm gonna bring the darkness out uh, where his nostrils are at. I'm gonna bring the darkness out where his eyes at. Put the darkness where the ears at. right here underneath the ear but I'm not gonna carry it all the way down. Darkness inside his mouth. So what I do I leave my pinky right here if I get the proportion as I push away. What do you mean what does that do? It helps you keep your hand more steady, stable more or steady? steady. So you're using the back of the brush to take off the excess Beijing? Yes. Uh, I don't think you pronounce it correctly, but yes. Beijing? Uh, everybody pronounces it different. I heard people say they call it Beijing. <coughs> I don't you call know. it Beijing. Right? When I got introduced to this, I lived in New York and everybody called it Steve Harvey. Oh yeah, I remember that. So when I came to Tampa, and uh, Everybody kept picking up the bottle and said, oh, Beijing, Beijing. And then now I guess the locals around here call it Beijing. So what do you call it? Beijing, right? Something like that? I still call it Steve Harvey. Oh. But your terminology used from customer and barber might be different. So that's why not only get the verbal consultation, but get the visual consultation for they could make sure that y'all talk about the same Haircut or product, when you get the visual. Right, look, I should be showing the product. Yeah. That's how I usually wear gloves, but not today. And this is the product that D Barber is using right now. I call it Beijing. But, well, I heard most people call it Beijing. Yeah, Tampa, they call it Beijing. you have masterpieces that you've done before, do those in a hair show. Don't challenge yourself. I mean, it's always good to challenge yourself, but might as well go prepared because all the greatest of all times of any profession or any talent, they say practice makes perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's funny you said that because um, I, that's actually what I say in my videos all the time. Now to make this NBA man jump out more, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this around it. D, so now you're a barber and an instructor. Yeah. Is there one that you like more than the other? Or do you like them both the same? Well, I enjoy teaching because uh, now I can give a little bit back. You right. know, I'm about giving back, so I enjoy teaching, give a little, give a little back, you know? Do you still miss cutting hair? Uh, well, I still cut hair on Fridays. All right. I mean, the cutting hair money is much more than the teaching. Now we gotta go ahead and fade this eye out here. Now we have to bring the eye out. We gotta go across the eye. 
eyeball right across here. One little line. Let's bring them up. See it? See that? Yeah. I pretty much think that's within reason. That's awesome. Now when we let this dry a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and fade out these lines around the NBA. And then we're gonna finish this eye here, cut out the nostrils, add a little bit of white around the eye and on the teeth, just to give it the glow for we can take a picture. Nice. And then that will be the end of it. Awesome. Now we're gonna go ahead and put some waves in LeBron's hair. You're going to? Yeah, he got, a, <laughs> he got some kind of waves there. That's awesome. So what we're gonna do on him on his waves, we're gonna do a little cheating. Nice. We're gonna make LeBron look real good. Nice. Of course, you know, you're always gonna remember your fourth first. Portrait. You're always gonna remember your you're first, right? Remember your fourth. My first portrait was Big Pun. Big point, right? Yeah. I was gonna say that because I know I know nah. long time ago I seen you do big point. I seen the the pictures. Now I've done big point like four or five times. Oh, okay. The first one I've done is uh on like in shoe boxes of pictures. Nice. They're really not on nothing. That was like uh when they had uh on you know, four G's and none of that back in the beeper days. Right. Yeah. But it looked more like a cartoon character, but that's when he was alive. Right. Yeah, I remember seeing a picture of uh, a portrait of Big Pun that you did, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. Little LeBron, some little kind of way. He don't got much in the picture, but we're gonna give him something. And you have been to competitions in New York, Miami. Well, I was with you in the Miami competition. You've been to Vegas. Have you been to the one in LA? No, I have not been to LA. Well, you went to Vegas, right? Yeah, I went to Vegas. I was I won uh two trophies out there for the main event. Nice. Actually, the, that was the one where the guy had a calic in the middle, so it looked like he had three eyes. Oh, that so makes So I came you, uh... to second place on that one. And then a freestyle design. The guy who won that one drew his own face in the back of his head. That's pretty good. Yeah, it was good. I just didn't want to cut my curls off. <laughs> Now, hands down, I give it to him. Nice. One thing about this barber industry, you gotta know how to give credit. Definitely, you, you gotta know? give credit when credit is due. Got to. Bro, I got that glow to him, baby. Oh yeah. So you ask me if I'm gonna use a razor? I probably won't. Yeah, you don't need to. I tell you, a lot of my designs I do, or portraits and stuff, I don't use a razor because I do a lot of shading and fading in mine. So when you do shading and fading, you really don't need. Yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to. Yeah. All right, here we go. This is the LeBron portrait. See, we put some waves in his head over here. Yes, sir. We got the NBA headband. Get carved out the shade and fade. We just added a little bit of white just to enhance it a little bit. Which I don't like color that much, but we put it in there anyway. There we go. There you go. Andre Fade Masters featuring D Barber and LeBron. Definitely. For more videos, check us out at FadeMasterVideos.com. And follow me on Instagram, D-E-E Barber 